Welcome aboard the System 76 transmission log. Our broadcast is about to begin. This is the latest on System 76 computers, manufacturing, and Pop OS. Now, for your in orbit crew. Did you guys get a chance to tag in on the hot dog sandwich debate yesterday? No. Okay. Did you hear about it happening? No. I saw the messages <laughs> on Slack. What was it? There was, me- I didn't even see any messages in Slack. I think it was Apparently, on that's where a lot of it was. So, no, it was in person. And really? it was oh, it extended yeah. out. It was Sammy and um, Brandon and Thomas egged it on too, and Aaron. And Sammy was very adamant. Sammy very, was very, very passionate, passionate about what usual. a sandwich should be classified as. And I don't even remember what it actually ended up being. But yeah, the, the whole hot dog sandwich debate was crazy. Levi was having fun. He was like just poking the bear and poking the yeah. bear and poking the bear on Slack. And yeah. he was having a freaking blast. And then Thomas came out and tried to use the, okay, this is what it is. And he tried to like lay down his argument. And yeah. then he said, now it's time to get back to work. <laughs> and, so and then I came to the office hard. and started it again and told Thomas how wrong he was. Yeah. Oh, my um, goodness. He was wrong. He was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap for the record. Okay. I think we're going to do a whoosh sound and then jump right into it. All right. We have a lot to cover this round. My name is Emma. My name is Alex. And we're just going to jump right into it. That was your line. Well, that silence was me jumping. <laughs> so I, I take stage direction quite seriously. First up, we had a few laptop releases that I must share. Oryx was updated to Intel HX class CPUs. The Lemur snuck in there with its beautiful 14 inch 16 by 10 100% sRGB display, feather like weight, and up to 14 hours battery life. And the Darter Pro was updated with a sleek new design and new CPU with Intel Arc graphics. And it's available for pre-order now as of today. Uh, It's also been updated with our new screen real estate agent, Sam. Um, He has been happy to show people the new property that we have with its vaulted 1610 ceilings and silver finished fixtures. Um, And now with this new darter, all of our ultra portables have a 100% sRGB display. so you're going to get really vibrant color from any lightweight laptop that we have. I think that's pretty exciting. Um, it is. And desktop news. Uh, we have a few desktops that have been updated now. First off is the Thalia Mira, which now has an Intel 14900KS CPU, uh, which is a faster clock speed than the K-Class. It's actually considered one of the world's fastest desktop processors. Whoa. Did you see the video I posted on social of that um, when we when we launched it? It was Sam acting as the fast 14900KS, and then Thomas was the other CPU. Like they were having, they were like racers, and then they ran down the the hallway towards me, and Sam was much faster. Yeah, his his face in that was great. Thomas walks, but he does not run. And then he gives this little look at the end. It was so funny. <laughs> So in other desktop updates, we have the Thalio now with PCIe 5.0, and that's with both storage and the GPU slots. Um, As far as storage drives go, it now supports 1.8 times faster read and three times faster write speeds. Um, In Thalio Spark news, there's an AMD Thalio Spark in the works with Ryzen 8000 G-series CPUs. Um, So you're going to get good performance at a higher affordability. Uh, And speaking of affordability, uh, I think the podcast might release before the end of the spring sale. Um, That ends on May 21st, and you can get uh, $100 off on Spark, $100 off Thalia, $200 off Thalia Mira, and $300 off Thalia Major. Nice. Thanks for throwing in that spring sale there. Customers want to hear that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving on. We have some Pop! OS and Cosmic news to share, don't we, Alex? 
Yes, we do. Pop OS was updated recently with kernel 6.8. Um, that includes driver support for the new Intel Core Ultra line that uh, our Lemur and our Darter have, um, as well as Arc Graphics um, and an eventual AMD line of Zen 5 CPUs. And the Intel Arc Graphics are what the new Darter has, so that's exciting. Yeah, it's got the integrated graphics in there. I hear it's it's fairly competitive with AMD's integrated graphics. Um, so whether you prefer the silver laptop or the black laptop, you're still going to end up with some pretty decent gaming. So that's exciting. So for Cosmic, uh, we've had a, a couple updates since our last podcast update. Um, the main points being that uh, GTK 3 and 4 theming have been added to Cosmic. So if you open uh, no maps like GIMP, it's it's going to follow the theme of uh, your desktop environment. So everything looks uh, good and cohesive. Um, in other news, the Cosmic App Store implementation is almost finished. Um, I, I've heard from many people around the office that it's very fast. Uh, Carl even said that uh, our CEO, Carl, he generally prefers using the terminal to perform updates, but because of uh, Cosmic Store being so fast that he actually likes to update through the Cosmic App Store now. Um, and we have quite a bit of community contributions out of the gate. Uh, so Ed Flores HZ on GitHub made a Cosmic Tasks app, uh, sort of a personal task management to-do list sort of thing. Um, it looks really cool. I think he did a good job on it. There's a uh, a web app manager from 11hsoft. Um, so you can type in the URL, call it something, decide if, if you want it to be opened in a, a private session or not. Um, and you just create an app right there. Um, and then lastly, there's an input devices applet from Leb Kuchin. Uh, on GitHub, where you can change the keyboard language, uh, keyboard layout. So if you wanted to use Dvorak instead of QWERTY, um, and you can also adjust keyboard settings from there. Nice. I love how our updates are always out of this world. <laughs> Far out, man. Yeah. The Cosmic Talk at Linux Fest Northwest was packed full, too, so... You know, we're spreading the word about Cosmic left and right. We also have a meetup in um, Boulder where we're going to be presenting Cosmic um, for about 30 people um, for the Boulder Linux user group. So Carl's going to head over there on June 13th and do that that talk if you're in the area and want to attend. Um, it's on meetup.com. So if you um, are interested in attending that, just check out meetup.com for the details. The meetups are always a great time. Um, we actually had one just a few days ago, if you wanted to talk a little bit about that one. Yeah, we had we actually had one May 4th for our monthly meetup, and it was a Star Wars-themed meetup, which was very appropriate for the day. And we had a lot of themed food, and we did Star Wars trivia, and we did a factory tour, and we had a lot of fun. And then... Monday, we actually had a meetup for people that are in town for the Red Hat conference. So we've just been having lots of meetups and lots of get-togethers, pulling all the nerds together. So yeah, it's so if, been so much fun. So if you can't make it in June, there will be more, but it is highly encouraged. Yes. Well, Emma, that's it for our news, but we do have a couple of guests here in the studio with us. Um, who did we have the opportunity to talk with today? I'm glad you asked. We have Stephanie and Marcos here from the production team at System76, and we wanted to know um, a little bit about your guys' roles there. So if Marcos, you could get us started. Well, there's a lot of different mini departments within the production department. They always try to have, um, like, be uh, very useful in different departments. So I work a lot. Started off in keyboards, building them, assembling them, testing them. Then they moved into post powder internals where I assembled our PCs, our Thelio line, our Miras, our majors. 
And then from there, they sent me to the mill. And that's pretty much what I do right now. A lot of working there with the sander and the laser and the saw, cutting raw material. I just do whatever is needed, you know, in the production. If there's something I don't know, I'm always willing to learn. But yeah, that's pretty much my role. Cool. Steph, what's your role? Um, I'm the production manager, so I'm responsible for facilitating everything from ordering our raw materials to getting the process through the floor to be able to create our Thaleo line, our Nebula line, and our keyboard line, and anything and everything that that entails. Nice. And Marcos, what are some of the coolest projects you've had the opportunity to work on? Uh, There's been a lot of cool projects. We get to work with a lot of machinery, lasers, big saws, all types of machines that make noises and stuff. But uh, I think the coolest to me would probably be flashing I.O. board. We have a separate little board for our fan controls inside our PCs, and we would have to flash them. And it's nothing too hard. Uh, You would just drag and drop, and then I would do the stress test using terminal. And I thought that was pretty cool because you get to see how ones and zeros translate into voltages and, you know, you get to see the fans turn on and all that. I don't do a lot of programming, but, you know, when I was doing that, it made me feel, you know, like a hacker or something. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Steph, what are some of the coolest projects you've had the opportunity to work on? Probably online and keyboards. It was really, really nice to be able to bring something from an idea that Carl had to actual full-blown fruition all within the building, all within the same team. Um, It was really cool to create the product line and then expand the product line. That was probably one of the funnest things. I think we started with launch, and then we went to light, and then we went to heavy. So it was about a year and a half, two years, but it was fun to literally be like Carl's, like, I want a keyboard. And they were like, cool, how do we even make a keyboard? And figuring all of that out was a lot of fun. The other fun thing would probably be when we get new machinery, it's a lot of fun to kind of play Tetris with the warehouse and try to figure out how to get these gigantic machines into the right spot and then getting them set up and lined up in a very straight line, which makes my OCD very happy. (laughs) So what kind of work went into figuring out how to make a keyboard? Everything. So the Thaleo line was semi-figured out as far as what they had wanted when we started production in-house. And they had had a starting point when we were using Trimware to actually outsource our PCs to begin with. So that one wasn't taking it from concept into reality. It was taking it like halfway through the concept already being there, altering it around a little bit. When it came to keyboards, we designed the entire thing all in-house with the same team. From literally being like, well, we want a keyboard, figuring out all the steps of how to make the keyboard, then what materials we would need, what packaging we would need, the PCBs, working with so many different departments to actually take it up into fruition and then expanding the line as well. Making our own testers in-house, making our own configurator in-house, assembling them, having keycap parties until we got the machinery in. So it was really nice to watch the product line literally grow from the ground up. And along the same lines, it sounds like you really like the keyboards, but what's your favorite System76 product? The Heavy. I really didn't think before we started making the product line that keyboards were like a cool thing. I thought it was just something that you type on and I thought people were a little crazy for being so into it. (laughs) And I felt that way a little bit when we had like the launch and the light because I was like, it's a keyboard. It's not really that big of a deal. But now that I have my own heavy and I'm able to map it and change it around for what I want and you're able to change out the switches, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I have a heavy too and I can't live without it now. I know, it's a game changer, man. It really is. It's amazing to me how just having conversations with people who also have opinions about stuff can lead to just such better quality of Mm -hmm. product. I always thought of a keyboard as just being this standard plastic thing that you're like, doop a doop a doom using this to type. But System76 making the launch sort of opened me up to, oh, actually, if, if you work hard at it, it can be something that's enjoyable to use. And then I actually have opinions about this thing now. And I love that we can innovate and change things so quickly. Like we take a lot of feedback from customers as well as people in-house to be able to make and change anything that we want. And I think at larger companies, that's kind of a more challenging thing to kind of do. So it's really, really nice. You will even hear from the production team when they're assembling something or when they're doing something, what they would like to change around and what they think would be cool. We bring it up to software, they end up implementing it in. Or bring it up to hardware and they end up implementing it in. And it's a really, really cool thing to see. Yeah, my favorite part about keyboards is probably the RMAs. You know, we uh, fix a decent amount of keyboards, repair orders, and it's just cool seeing, like, all the weird ways people mess up their keyboards. I I just imagine every busted keyboard that comes in is just filled with Cheetle. Often, yes. (laughs) Sometimes bugs as well. We've found those a few times. Oh, fun. That's always an interesting one. (laughs) Those get wrapped up in a bag for, like, two weeks before we touch them. 
And a lot of our employees are makers or creators or builders outside of work. Do you guys make or create things outside of work? I solder. Before this, I used to work at Advanced Circuits. I got familiar with IPC standards and I got to solder a lot of circuit boards together. So every once in a while, you know, I'll buy like a solder kit, especially now, since I like to distract myself with hobbies, you know, because I'm living at my parents' house. So I've gotten back into soldering like the other day I finished this little voltage regulator it's nothing fancy it was like a do-it-yourself kid for like kids 12 and up but I think it's cool it's therapeutic you know Mm. soldering the joints and all that stuff I didn't realize how useful it was till like I started fixing electronics you know like a couple months back I fixed my mom's dryer it was just a little wire terminal that had like broken loose somehow but still you know you feel good when you can fix an appliance like, oh, yeah, I don't got to pay, you know, the $300 they try to charge me or anything. Yeah. Steph, how about you? I craft a lot. I'm mildly obsessed with it. Right now, my biggest things are cross-stitching and knitting and candle making and sewing because I make costumes for the Renaissance Festival, which I'm also insanely obsessed with. I do a little bit of woodworking. That one's gotten a little bit less because I've crafted for so long. My hands are kind of giving out a little bit. Um, but I like to change, I like to get furniture and change it around and make it a little bit more unique, especially restoring it. That's one of my favorite things to do right now. A lot of people paint a lot of really beautiful old furniture and destroy it. So restoring it back to an old look is something that I'm really, really loving right now. You also knitted all the little gnomes that are around yeah, the office. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I got really obsessed with those guys for a little bit. And I think I made like a hundred of them. And that was a really fun project. That was a lot of hand sewing, but it was a lot of fun. Um, and they're called tomptas. They're like this uh, Swedish mischievous little thing that if you don't clean up after yourself, they'll come and mess your mm-hmm. house up. So I thought it would be fitting to have it in the factory, and now they're just everywhere, which yeah. is great. I didn't know you sewed all of those together. Yeah. They, they, they look really good. I thought Thank they were you. store-bought. Thank you. No, I made them. I made them all. They're all slightly different, which was even fun. It let me play around with a lot of different patterns, a lot of different ideas of how to do it. And now I have a couple people from work requesting them. They want some themed ones. So I'm going to be trying to work on that for the Christmas season this year. That's fun. And the plants at the factory, we have tons of plants now. Is that you're doing stuff? Yeah, I'm obsessed (laughs) with plants as well. My whole house is covered in plants. I have skylights at my house, which is fantastic. So I have them scattered everywhere. And then I was running out of room. So I started bringing them to work. And then I just kind of kept making them and propagating (laughs) more and finding more. And we're actually trying again this year to garden at the warehouse as well. So we're going to be making some garden beds that have wheels on them so we can roll them outside and then get sunlight and then bring them back in. So we have a bunch of seedlings that are starting. Don't know if if that's actually going to be successful this year, but we're going to try to get that one figured out. And then we're actually going to put them in the beer garden. So where everybody has their lunch, there's going to be like fruits and there's going to be some vegetables that people can kind of pick and add onto their lunches. That's cool. I was feeling sad about how dead my space felt at the office. And then you come in with like two plants and like, do you want these? I'm like, yes, please. I appreciate you taking them because the table is kind of exploding at this point. And we have a bunch of plants in my areas and Jen's area as well that are shooting off little babies. So we keep having to probably like first we just started that we wanted more. But now they're doing so well there that they're starting to make little offshoots. And we have to cut those off and we have to propagate them. But I only have two tables. So spreading them out throughout the whole warehouse is fantastic. Do you find your hobbies help you in your day-to-day at work? Oh, absolutely. Production is pretty much just crafting. I think it can feel a little bit monotonous because in a lot of ways you're doing the same thing day in and day out if you're in like the same section. But pretty much what we're doing is just crafting all day long. Even though we have machines and even though we have like a lot of processes that help kind of automate it, it is still a handcrafted product line that we have. Um, No matter what, even if it's just loading and unloading stuff, QC work, little details like that all end up adding into you being very, very involved in doing it. And we actually have a lot of different crafters in our department as a whole. A lot of the people that we end up hiring are people that just like to make stuff and they just like to play around with stuff. And it's really cool to be able to have that aspect in your job every single day. You guys made pinatas for May the 4th. Yeah. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was was actually, that was a lot of fun. It was something that kind of was a good team building exercise. We got to let everybody kind of get their creative juices flowing, which has been nice. We've had a lot of orders, so it's been a lot of people being at their same station day in and day out, kind of doing the same work over and over and over again. So getting to have teach them how to do that and allowing them to kind of like use their artistic skills, I think was really, really nice. They made really cool moons. Yeah. They were so cool. They were so cool. And they did a great job on them. One of them is so cool that we didn't want it to be destroyed. So it's <laughs> the destroyed version is on the floor in the beer garden still. 
That's probably Satoshi's. He is super, super crafty and super creative. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else that you guys want to share about production? Um, only other thing I really want to kind of bring up is we I've grown up with a lot of entrepreneurs and I've grown up with a lot of in a lot of manufacturing facilities. My partner even works in another manufacturing facility. And I think one thing that's really different is how much we do do in-house and how much we focus to keep as much in-house as possible. Most places that do manufacturing tend to be more of an outsource thing. For instance, we'll have a floor dedicated to a specific line of a specific phone. That's all they do day in and day out. Or you'll have companies like where they do a lot of outsourcing work where it's not their product. It is products for other people that don't want to be able to do the manufacturing aspect in-house. But with us, we do everything in-house from concept to making it to troubleshooting it to figuring it out. Even powder coating is something that we do in-house, which, again, is something that normally people outsource to. And I think it's really, really cool how we work hard to get as much into one building as possible. It can be challenging at times because we are learning a lot. We don't always know what we're doing, but we have the room to be able to figure out what to do. And we have the freedom to be able to figure out the best paths forward, which, again, is also something that's extremely rare when it comes to like a manufacturing facility. So that's probably one of my favorite things. Going off of that, all the in-house stuff is probably my favorite thing to do, too, because there's a lot of just creative problem solving. You know, you run into a problem, It's especially when we're doing a new process or a new, you know, Thelio line. We just kind of have to get our brains together and figure it out. So I really like that it's just not the same repetitive, boring stuff. They really make you think and work, and, you know, it's great. <laughs> yeah, and I would say the people to kind of keep you on your toes throughout the day. Mm -hmm. What would you say is like the nerdiest thing you've seen at the factory? Oh, mm -hmm. Probably the conversations on Slack. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like just in the last few weeks, there's been such interesting one. We had the garbage disposal situation. <laughs> we had the conversation that we were just talking about, about the difference between a sandwich and a wrap and what gets classified as what if it's a hot dog or a hamburger. The day-to-day -day conversations are honestly probably the nerdiest thing. And it's one of the things that I love is we have so many different types of nerds. We don't just have like software nerds and we don't just have building nerds. We have nerds of all varieties and watching them all come together and talk to each other, whether they're arguing or whether they're like collaborating. It is a very, very interesting thing. You're never bored there ever just mm -hmm. looking at the conversations. It's a it's a beautiful thing. It is fantastic. It is Elaborate for a second, though. What was the garbage disposal situation? So I went in to the gar I went in to try to ch to check the garbage disposal. It wasn't working, so I had to go to Bjorn, break his heart to let him know that the <laughs> garbage disposal wasn't working. So then because we do literally as much in-house, we even do our own repairs to our own areas. So Bjorn went to go and pull it apart and found well, we're pretty sure I think you were the one that even said it looks like part of a banana. I'm pretty sure you're right. It was part of a banana, which then led into a whole conversation about proper etiquette when you're sharing spaces. Also, the fact that our garbage disposal cannot handle things, what you can put down and what you can't put down it. And then people just started getting extremely creative with that. And I think there were a few messages even before that day. I don't remember what they were, but they were also interesting. It's just like that entire channel that day was just like so <laughs> oh, random. Because mm -hmm. there was leftover food from May the 4th. The party from May the 4th. So mm -hmm. there were funny foods that were left over in the yeah, fridge. Yeah, what was it? Han burgers and... Han burgers. Jabba the hot dogs. Yeah. Uh, Obi-Wan cannoli cannolis. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jen was asking where her foam mace oh, was. Yes. It was all in one day. I was like... In a short amount of time, too. I think within like three hours, it was just bam, bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Last question for you. If I wanted to come to System 76 to take a tour of the manufacturing facility, how would I go about doing that? You just email Emma at System 76 or you can just stop by. We've had people just kind of come knock on the door and be like, hey, what you do is cool. Can you come? Can we come in? And yeah, people can. Yeah, that's cool, too. Our tours are free. They're very engaging. You get to see the entire warehouse from beginning to end. We have customer care in there. We have our data analyst in there. We have sales in there. We have our marketing people in there. We have our build team in there that actually assembles the PCs. We have production in there. We have our QA department in there. And you get to kind of see the company as a whole, which I think is also one of my favorite things about tours. It's also something a little, that's a little bit different from a lot of other manufacturing facilities. Normally, you go on a manufacturing tour or you go on an office space tour. When you come to System 76, you literally get to see the company. From like coming in the front doors to going through the entire warehouse, you get to see it all. And you get to meet so many different people from so many different departments. Emma, I believe you have a box. You have, you have a box. Oh, right, right. Okay, guys. I generally think outside of it, but today I'm thinking of the box. Okay, so this is the fun game that I created 
that, again, might be fun and might not be fun. <laughs> so what is going to happen is I'm going to shake this box. You guys have to listen very carefully. And then you have to guess what's in the box. But you each get one question to ask. And that'll be your hint. Okay. And then um, at the end, everyone can guess one guess. Ready? Ready. Yes. It's not a head, is it? That was your one question. That was my one question. <laughs> and no, it and is it not a it. head. Is it something from the factory? Yes. Is it square? No. Huh. Okay. I'll give you a hint. It is something that lights up. <gasps> Interesting. That can fit in the box. A <laughs> USB port thingy. How did you oh, get that? Because awesome. <laughs> Marcos is fantastic. Wait, wait, wait. Define thingy. A USB. Like one of the little pop OS? Yeah. The sticks? Oh. Oh, I didn't look know. at you go. <laughs> it's uh, about to go to Black So Hawk it's a Casino. USB stick, pop OS branded, that we bring to conferences, and it has pop OS on it, and we hand those out. Yeah, and when you flash it with an ISO, it lights up. Oh. I was well, when you guess plug it the, in, uh, it lights up, but when you flash it, it blinks. I was going to guess the broken part of the lightsaber from the pinatas. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't light up anymore. So. <laughs> I was going to guess one of those blinking candles that we put in the baby head in Sam's office. Oh, that would be a good idea, too. <laughs> Next time. Our, uh, our VP of sales went on vacation, so we, we decided to prank him by putting a baby head on the wall that was found in a snowman. So that when he walked in and went to his desk, he would be looking right at the baby head. And that I, was glowing with the little candle yeah, inside I, of I it. I found these little candles. I think we used them for Superfan at one point and put one of them in the baby head so the eyes were glowing. It was good. I still don't know why there was a baby head in the snowman. It was like a no, regular it was why there was baby snowman, head in the snowman and they ripped it open. It <laughs> and it was just like a doll. It was creepy. We had to. Fi I had to fix it. I, and we didn't want to put the head back in because it made no sense why there was even a head. <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna chalk it up to Christmas magic. It could be, could be. <laughs> creepy Christmas magic. <laughs> uh, it even has boots. Nightmare Before Christmas magic. Oh, that's a good one. All right. Well, thanks for playing today, guys, and thanks for coming in to have an awesome interview with us. Of course. Um, Thank you for letting us talk about what we do. Always a pleasure. Three, two, one. This has been the System76 Transmission Log. For more inspiration, check out the website and follow us on social media. On your descent back to Earth, please keep your hands and feet inside the transport beam at all times. Captain Sinoff, in transmission. That was audible. Sorry. <laughs> my I'm my stomach I just growled. Oh, oh, that, that was me. I thought that was me. Oh, that was me. Maybe it's all of us. That was um, me, you know. I drink a monster every morning, and that's not the <laughs> best idea, yeah. especially now that I'm getting uh, old. Uh, <laughs>